Hello and welcome to another live sales chat. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And I'm supported today, as usual, by my colleague, Martha Neumeister, who is in Vienna. Hi. Hi. Proudly sporting her Peru shirt, uh, supporting uh, the Peruvians who are playing France right now, actually, in the World Cup. So things aren't going that well, but hopefully it'll uh, be turned around in the second half. <laughs> And our guest today is Richard Roof, who has a long, long career in, in sales. He's the author of several books. He is now the partner in Level 5 Selling. And uh, Richard uh, is going to talk to us today about getting account strategy right. So before we get into the discussion, uh, if you want to join in on Twitter, it's hashtag sales chats, hashtag sales chat. So get involved, answer the questions, ask questions if you like, but you know, make this an interactive session. Um, so Dick, just before we start, um, Level 5 Selling is your new venture, right? Yes, that's correct. It's, a, at, uh, it's about a year old at this point. It's a, it's a joint venture with John Hoskins. Uh, John recently wrote a really tremendous uh, new book called level five selling and we decided to uh, translate the book into some experiences that clients can actually use to implement the ideas fantastic all right let's talk about uh, getting account strategy right so i mean let's let's just baseline it to begin with what, what do you mean by account strategy all right i i think you know i think that's a that's a good place to to start i, I you know i think if you talk to people in most companies and ask them, so, uh, you know, do you have an account strategy for your five major accounts or what does account strategy mean to you? Uh, the problem is you, you get a variety of different definitions mm -hmm. and it, it's pretty hard to get things right if you don't even agree on what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so to me, one of the sort of foundational ideas is, is you need a, you know, a common, concise and actionable definition of what do you mean by an account strategy? And, and for me, uh, you know, one that I find most useful is to say an account strategy is a plan of action of getting the right message to the right person at the right time. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that plan of action for getting that message to the right person at the right time, then you don't have an account strategy. So it's not about filling out a form or something like that. It's about a plan of action for moving forward in a complex account. Yeah, because I often think that, uh, or I've often come across where people, when you say, do you have an account strategy? And they immediately say, yeah, well, we we have these three opportunities within this company or this can you go, okay, that's not an account strategy. That's three opportunities. What's your overarching approach to this account? And I think that's the piece you're talking about that people miss and is like, is what is your overarching strategy for this account? Yeah. You know, it's not that complicated, you know, mm -hmm. but, but absolutely right. I mean, that's a common response or, or this idea of confusing goals and strategy. You know, my three goals are to do this, you know, mm -hmm. well, that's a jolly good idea, but it's not a strategy for an account. Uh, you know, I, I think it's really, really important in today's market that, that certainly for your four or five major accounts, you ought to have a plan of action of how you're going to navigate that account, you know, over the next several months. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to win if you don't know where you're going. Yeah, well, as you know, there's a, the old saying goes, um, if you don't know where you're going, any path will take you there, right? Right. <laughs> um, okay, so what are some best practices for getting, for, for uh, creating and then executing a good account strategy? Yeah, that, you know, I think those are, those are something that companies ought to be spending more time addressing because some of the, some of the factors are probably unique you know, to an industry or to a company, or, but, but some are common. One of the things I think is really important, John, is, is to recognize that if you're going to get account strategy right, 65 to 70% of that is all about information. Mm -hmm. You know, are you getting, organizing, and interpreting, you know, the information you need to develop the plan of action? If you're not getting the right information, if you're not organizing it in a way that's interpretable, then I don't know how you develop a plan of action. And, and I think there's some very specific 
chunks of information that you need when it comes to best practices. I mean, four jump out at, at us. I mean, one is you got to know the players. Right. You know, um, today, the, you know, probably in major accounts, there's six or seven players involved in any major decision. So who's the decision maker? Who are the key influencers? You know, is Jerry a, a key person or just a gatekeeper? Mm -hmm. You've got to know the answers to those questions or you don't know who to talk to. The other, the other piece. Yeah, just, just, just on that point, right? I yeah. mean, I, th I think that's a critical point because, um, you know, there's always this temptation when you're dealing with, you know, when you're in sales is, you know, the first friendly voice or friendly face or the person who seems excited, you kind of latch on to that person and, and you may actually elevate them to a position beyond which they actually have influence, right? In your mind, just because they're the person. I mean, we built this into Pipeliner with the buying center so you can map out all the different people who are involved. But I think that's a really critical point to underline is you have to figure out all the people who are gonna touch this opportuni opportunity or touch this account, including maybe the people who aren't well disposed towards you. No question. No question. If you don't know the players, it's tough. And, you know, you mentioned something like take the notion of, it, of uh, internal champions. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people confuse account friends with internal champions. Right. You don't have that many internal champions. Champions not only have to be, uh, you know, willing to chat with you, they have to be able to influence the account in your direction. That, that's a different that's a different kind of relationship. Well, who is that? Who has the potential uh, that where you want to invest to develop that person into an eternal champion? It can't be everybody, and it can't be just the person who who likes you a lot. So, mm -hmm. so that player thing is is one chunk. I, I think another chunk is you really have to understand what's going on in terms of events, what's mm -hmm. going on inside the company, and what's going on external to the company that might influence that buying process. You know. Is the company going to uh, launch a new product? Uh, you know, have they made some rather unusual shifts in budget allocation? Have they hired a new bunch of people in one division? Well, all that matters if you're thinking about a major account of how you might proceed and what's going on externally. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the market? Is there a talk of a merger? You have to have, again, a systematic way of getting that information, organizing it, and interpreting what it means for you in terms of your plan of action. In some cases, it may mean nothing. In other cases, it may change your account strategy. Mm -hmm. So, so what those events, again, you're operating a little bit in, you know, in a blind spot. Yes. So, so what that what that requires for the modern seller today, right? So that requires that they do a lot of background research, or they have people helping them with background research. And it's not just, as you said, it's not just doing the research and getting the information. It's also you have to have the business acumen, right, to interpret that, right? If you don't know the business of business and you don't have some kind of understanding of the business of your buyer, you're not going to be able to interpret any of this stuff. You're not actually going to be able to make it intelligent, uh, intelligence that you can use. Absolutely right. I mean, th that's why it's not about just filling out a form. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to have the ability to say, okay, what does all this mean? You know, the, all these things are happening internally and externally. What's it mean for, for me as far as how I'm going to proceed? And maybe, maybe you don't know. Well, in which case, what are the resources that you can leverage inside your company? Maybe you should go to your engineering group. Mm -hmm. Maybe you should go to your marketing group. Maybe you should involve your account manager. So what resources are you going to leverage to help you to interpret that data? So that, that to me is the second chunk. I think the third and fourth chunks are, you obviously have to know about what's going on in, in relative to the competition. You have to understand how does the client perceive the strengths and weaknesses of the people you're competing against. I think, John, that what I've seen too often when I talk to reps is they view the, the competition through their perspective. Oh, you know, those guys over at Acme, I mean, they, they just don't, they just don't have their act together. I mean, this is a shoe in for us. <laughs> well, you may think that's true, 
it may actually be true, but the client may think the folks at Acme are just red hot right. because they're looking at it from a particular perspective. So you've got to get on the other side of the table and have a genuine understanding of how the competition ranks against you. And, and don't, don't view it on history. Don't view it on your personal bias. And of course, the, the fourth factor is you have to know where the customer is on the buying process. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things I think that's, that's happened probably in the last four or five years, John, is I think buyers are involving the selling organizations later in the buying cycle. They, right. were, they know a ton of stuff about about all the people that are, they're going to be looking at seriously before they even talk to, to an account rep. So where are they? Because if they're halfway through their buying process, then you can't start your selling process at the beginning or you're just out of sync. Yeah. So, I, I think that's a, that's, a, a, that's a key point. And it kind of comes back sometimes to fundamentals, right? Um, and I think this is something that it's very easy, especially when you've been doing the job for a long time, it's very easy to sometimes skip the fundamentals and skip the basics, right? So as you say, where they are in the buying cycle seems like a really obvious thing, but um, you still have to do that research and really figure out where they are. And, and again, in a complex sale, you can't just take the word of the first person you speak to, right? Because in some people's minds in a complex sale, if there's a lot of people involved, they may think they're at different points of the, they may actually be at different points of the sales cycle. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I, you know, I think, if, I think most people would agree that if you looked over the last four or five years, B2B companies have gone through transformational changes in how they buy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to be very honest, I'm not sure that we on the selling side have kept pace. I mean, it, it's, it's, I don't think it's just about doing what you've been doing a little bit better. In some cases, it's doing something different. And part yeah. of that is getting more serious about getting strategy right. I mean, maybe 10 years ago, you know, you could you know, develop a, a plan of action and, and you could use that plan of action regardless of what account you're in. You know, just play the same tune again and again, and you got a, a pretty good shot at it. I don't think you can do that today. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think each company is unique. Their processes are unique. You have to have the ability to custom fit your plan of action to that individual company. Therefore, the, the importance of, of the ability to create strategy, uh, to me, has escalated dramatically in, in the last four or five years. But that raises a good point then, um, then Dick. It's like, who is really responsible for driving this? Um, is it the sales manager? Is it the individual salesperson? Is it sales operation? Who, who should own this? Well, I, you know, I, I, again, I, I expect there may be certain differences by company, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to step back and look at it at 30,000 feet, I think it is a team. I think, I think the answer is that it's a team responsibility. But if I had to pin the tail one place, it would be on the account manager. Mm -hmm. It's their plan of action. They have to execute it. But if they're smart, I, I think they're involving – a number of the resources inside their company, and, and you, you listed some. Many companies have very, very strong uh, technical engineering groups. Right. Boy, if you're not talking to those, those, those folks, that's crazy when it comes to strategy. And, and a lot of salespeople don't. They just say, well, you know, they're just the technical guys. But the technical guys and gals are the ones who implement the project. Right. So, so maybe it would be worthwhile to engage them and when you're coming to an account strategy, because they may be able to provide you a way to differentiate yourself from the other folks. The, the other folk is I think you should involve your internal champion. You right. know, that's why you have internal champions is to help you think through how you should navigate that account. So today, if you haven't invested the time to develop a, a willing and able internal champion, shame on you. And I think you ought to leverage that person. I mean, it's not about a secret plan. An right. account strategy isn't a secret plan. You can share it with your internal champion and ask them how, how they can help you to execute that. 
Yeah, because at the end of the, at the end of the day, what you're doing it should be benefiting the organization that you're selling to. So I mean, it stands it stands to reason. Um, but tell me a little bit about okay. So here's what often happens is. Uh, as we said before, um, sales people and even sales managers, you know, they get bogged down in opportunities and yeah. let's, let's close this opportunity and we need to make this month, we need to make this quarter, whatever it is. And yeah. and the whole strategic account planning thing gets pushed to the side a little bit. So, I uh, mean, how, how would you advise organizations or sales people or sales managers, how would you advise them to ensure that this that it doesn't happen, it doesn't get pushed to the side or ignored? Well, first of all, it does happen. Mm-hmm. There's just no question about that. You know, the, the amount of stuff that, that sales managers get and funnel down to their account reps to handle is tremendous. I mean, if you look at most organizations, just forget about what they're doing. If you just look at the percentage of time that's, that account executives are selling versus doing something else, mm-hmm. it's a frightening number. Right. So if if you could seriously <laughs> help account execs spend 10, 15% more time selling and maybe even thinking strategically, the world would be a different place. And, and I think, John, there's no way to make that happen if you don't start at the top. That is a cultural thing inside your sales organization. So the VP of sales in your sales enablement group and your marketing group, all the people who have that V in front of them, Mm -hmm. of their title need to come to the party and say, folks, we got to get serious about this. The world has changed out there. We have to think and act strategically if we're going to do things differently and win in a higher percentage. Because if it doesn't come from the top, the managers will continue to be pressured and it'll be put off to Friday, as you say, and it will never get done. Yeah. And, and, well, well, as you know, people always take their lead from, um, you know, the people above them. So if it's not important to your manager, they ain't going to do it. If it's not, if, if it's not important to their manager's managers, their manager's not going to do it. So as you say, it really has to come from the top. I wanted to touch, uh, go by switch back for a moment and touch yeah. on something I think that you really, that you mentioned. And that's the idea of involving the internal champion, right? Um, I think um, you're going to be viewed so differently as a salesperson um, if you, as you say, you talk with your internal champion or other people in the organization and they see that you are taking a strategic approach to them and to their business needs as opposed to just closing opportunities, right? I don't think there's any question about that. I I mean, to me, I think at least a lot of major companies are looking for salespeople uh, who can be trusted advisors. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're looking for you to provide more than slick products because quite frankly, a lot of people have got slick products, Mm -hmm. but can you be the kind of company and can you be the kind of account executive that can provide them insights? Can you help them to look at where they're going in a different kind of way. Well, you're not going to do that if if you're not trusted. Mm -hmm. And so having conversations about strategy is one of the many ways that you can elevate that level of trust. Hey, here's what I think is happening on your side of the table. Here's what kind of things we're thinking about doing. Does this make any sense? Are there things we're not doing? What do you need that we're not doing? having those conversations with people. And again, the eternal champion is, is, is a great place to start. I think that's critical because I think if you can, if you can change the image that you're projecting to a company from being a, a person who sells products to a person who provides insights, I think you've changed the game. That's getting strategy right. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think, uh, and I think people have often misinterpreted this idea of the trusted advisor. It's like um, they confuse it with just being trusted, right? And to be honest, <laughs> right. you know, you want to really right. being trusted by your customer is is pretty much a baseline, right? I mean, you need to be trusted. You know, they're not going to do business with you. But that's different from being a trusted advisor than being somebody who they actually want to have a conversation about their business with and are looking 
for you to bring something like from the bit, the work you do with other people in their industry or, you know, the experiences you've had, but you have to develop that the relationships with the buyer and the customer in order to de- get to that level. Right. And you have to bring value. Uh, yes. Yeah. I trusted. There's two words, trusted advice. <laughs> you know, and you can't, you can't be, any kind of advisor, if you don't know a lot of stuff, that's that's why knowing all that information is important. If mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on in the industry, if you don't know what's going on inside the company, then you can't talk about what those folks might be able to do in any kind of, of believable context. You know, it's just not relevant to what they're doing. So it takes a lot of time, but it's about getting interpreting information and then thinking about how you can use that information to make the client's world a better place. So if you're, so if you're a salesperson or, or, or a sales manager or somebody who's watching this now or, or watching the recording later and you go, Hmm, okay, we don't really have any of this in place. Um, What are some good first steps to take in order to start doing this? Because I mean, it, it, it takes a while to build this, this properly into, into your workflow, into your daily work practice. But what are some of the first steps you would advise somebody to take in, in terms of a can strategy? Right. Well, one of the things we talked about already, which Mm -hmm. it it would be really nice if you agreed on what the definition of an account strategy is. Right. And and we talked about that. Mm -hmm. I, I think, that's a good first step. And we also talked about a second step, which is you have to realize that this is about a cultural change, not just, you know, again, thinking about a different kind of forum. So, mm-hmm. you know, how are all the different players, marketing and sales enable and operations, what's their role in this? And that's that's a discussion at a, at a senior level. I think that the third thing which we haven't talked about is I think you have to figure out how managers are going to spend time with account execs coaching them to do this. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to do this all by yourself. This is a place where coaching can really help. So if, 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 if you haven't figured that out, how you're going to do that, then you need, that's an early on step. I mm-hmm. mean, I think it'd be very interesting in most sales organizations to say, how much time managers do you spend A, coaching your reps to get better at account strategy and B, how much time do you spend helping them to formulate a strategy? And those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. I I agree. Um, But that obviously presupposes that the sales manager is good at account or knows how to account strategy. Yes, yes, yes. And and again, it's not as if there is for want of information about how Mm -hmm. to do this. Obviously, there there are many companies that, that they're now legion in number that have great programs for helping companies get better. There's tremendous blog sites that you can go to that talk about account strategy. There's, there's, uh, you know, there's excellent, excellent research papers being written by people like Bain and Alexander and, Mm -hmm. and McKinsey. It's not for a want of information. I mean, how you get better at strategy as far as the the academic knowledge base for that is available to any person in today's world. The trick is how do you as a company integrate that information systematically into your company and get serious about doing something about it? But if anybody says, gee, I don't know, I don't know how to figure that out, then they haven't turned on their computer recently. Yeah, yeah. No, I couldn't agree more. And I think, as you said at the outset, I mean, it's a, it's largely it's a, it's a cultural thing, and it's making a decision that this is something that you want to do, uh, yeah. and, and and this is something that you're going to do, and you're going to figure out the time. And again, as you said, you're also with upper management. You're going to say, you know, I need to, I need this time for coaching, for strategy and stuff. So if you're calling me every five minutes and asking me, you know this month's opportunities where are they i can't do that right (laughs) you can't do that that's right that's right you can't do that okay so um we're coming up against the end of our our sales chat here and what we always like to do dick is ask our guests what is um a power tip in terms of 
um, you know, you've had a very successful career. What are what are some of the things that you do when you got up in the morning, set yourself up for a successful day? Sure, sure. Uh, well, I, I I do still like that old uh, idea <laughs> of uh, reading people who are substantive in my area. I've been doing this for a long time. And I still spend an enormous amount of time reading what other people have to say about what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. And I think the trick to that, John, is, is uh, and this takes a little bit of time, I suppose, but um, some people are more serious about what they're doing than others. And so you need right. to identify those people that are doing substantive things. And, and we mentioned some, some of those companies like McKinsey and Bain and so forth, they're really sharp. They, they turn out great research papers. They have substantive people and there's, there's also groups you can join. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know that you know. Uh, I belong to a group of other people who write about about sales and sales effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Well, join a group. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Uh, and and read what they say. And and there's absolutely an enormous number of people writing blogs. And again, I think you need to kind of sort out you yeah. know the, the shaft, but. But fair enough. But you can do that if you put a little bit of time into it. So my, my overall suggestion is to read stuff, talk to other people about what's going on, and do not develop complacency. Mm -hmm. Don't say, well, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I pretty much got it. <laughs> you know? uh, it's, it's, well, well it's, it's that old saying, isn't it? It's not what you don't, it's not what you don't know that, that gets you. It's what you think you know for sure, what you know for sure that just ain't so isn't that something yeah. i think that's it <laughs> and i think you're right i think complacency um and obviously um you know reading and 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 staying up with information I mean, that's why we started sales pop was to give right. people a, a place to go because there's so much information out there um okay uh, dick before we finish up if you just want to give a little bit more information about you your company how people can learn more about you sure sure well, as you mentioned at the beginning, you know, I just formed a new company about a year ago with a colleague uh, by the name of John Hoskins. John recently wrote a, a really great book called Level 5 Selling. And so uh, what we're trying to do is exactly what we've been talking about, which is how can we help clients implement a, uh, a cheaper, better, faster way of getting better at, at selling effectively. And, and account strategy is, is a piece of that. And and our, our answer to that is one is, is really leveraging technology. I mean, there's some really great software programs that, 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 that uh, managers and uh, reps can use for coaching and, and getting smarter to answer your question. How do we get smarter about this? So we, we've worked pretty hard on that. So you can learn more about us by going to uh, our website on level five selling. Uh, you can read John's book, level five selling. Uh, so we would love to talk to people. Uh, we think uh, we might be able to help you a little bit. Uh, so uh, we, again, John, thank you for your invitation to talk to you and your audience. So it's been great. Yeah, listen, thanks, Dick. It's always a pleasure. Um, Richard Roof, uh, Level 5 Selling. And Martha in Vienna, um, uh, let me check in here. Doesn't look like things are going that well for Peru. So hopefully there's a little time left. Hopefully we'll get a, a turnaround. Um, again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another sales chat really soon.